Sunday World Reefers. I'm back. I am Coral. I will be your host for Stony Sunday. And it's been a couple of weeks since we sat down and smoked, answered some questions, and had a chill sesh. I've been gone for a couple of weeks because last weekend was Mother's Day. Unfortunately, I did not have a Mother's Day Stony Sunday. It was the first year there was no Mother's Day Stony Sunday. And before that, I was in Texas marching with World Reefers at the Global Marijuana March. Had the best time in Fort Worth with the reefers there walking around on Saturday and had that stony Sunday up two weeks ago but we are finally back to just sit down smoke chill with everyone and I really appreciate you joining for the live sesh if you've made it I'm gonna be hitting my nectar collector for this episode it's been a while since I pulled the nectar collector off the shelf and actually made some use of it it's nice and mostly clean. I think that we've taken a couple dabs on it since pulling it down off the shelf. But it's one of my favorite pieces to hit. Definitely gets you some nice big rips. And then I have the nectar that I'll be collecting loaded up in this Corinne Winters dab dish. Good amount loaded up and ready. And I see questions coming in already. Oh my goodness. Okay, Trixie K has asked, what is the next travel for me? And I'm so glad you asked because I really wanted to remember to tell you guys what's going on. But let's heat this thing up first. I haven't officially announced it, but I've been dropping some hints here and there. The next trip I'm taking will be down to Southern California to the Los Angeles area, and hopefully I'll be able to host a meetup while there. It's clogged! There we go. Much, much better. Okay, so I haven't officially announced the LA trip quite yet because I'm still working on finalizing the exact meetup plans. And I don't wanna say too much. For the LA meetup, we are hopefully gonna be indoors and have a safe area to smoke and actually maybe bring your pieces if you want and have a sit down type thing. So I really, really hope it can come together. It would be on Sunday, June 4th, and ideally there would even be a Stony Sunday from this sesh. We would actually film you guys asking the questions there in person. So I don't know if it's gonna come together. I've got my fingers crossed. I'm knocking on this wood table. I really, really would love to make it happen. <clears throat> I'll be down in LA because I will be filming for someone else's YouTube channel and Facebook page and their show. Can't, I don't think I'm allowed to say who quite yet, but you guys will definitely see that as it is revealed. But while I'm in the area, I would absolutely love to have a meetup. I didn't go to any LA events this year. I saw where to go. Speaking of June, where'd that question go? From Smoke Green Eat Clean asking, because Mio is trans, would I be going to Pride? Would we both be going to Pride? Um, full disclosure, I have celebrated Pride many, many a times. And certainly before I was dating Mio, I can't say I celebrated Pride before I knew him because we did meet in kindergarten. So I'm not really sure maybe I celebrated before that, but because we are dating, we've definitely talked about what we would do for Pride or if we want to go and celebrate in some other way, but Mio as an individual, he's gone to some Pride celebrations here or there, but he's not really been like a big Pride community out on floats and in parades type person, so I have my own hesitations with really big crowds and being stuck in a city and not being able to get out because of all the traffic and you're totally surrounded by everyone you just can't leave and get like five minutes to yourself. I have my own reservations about things like that, but we both have a lot to say about self-identity, about like freedoms and about being safe and about just like the right to be yourself. So absolutely, I see us celebrating Pride. You'll hear about it on my channel. I'll certainly be mentioning it. I'm not sure if Mio has any specific Pride plans for his content on what's hit on his page or anything, but it's definitely something that I would say we talked about because it's a passion of both of ours to fight for equal rights and to help people when possible. And it's not necessarily just because my boyfriend is a trans guy that he is interested in these issues. I think it's because he's a compassionate, intelligent, kind human being that he is interested in going to Pride and celebrating and helping encourage everyone else to be proud and happy. So next up, we're dabbing some more. Oh yeah, I did wanna show you guys what the dabs looked like before I put them in that dish because they're kind of dark once you get them in the dish. But that golden ratio extracts. Ooh, 
That concentrate is so golden, so pretty. Oh my goodness, this, they make some of my favorite concentrates in the bay. I just love when I get a chance to pick them up. This stuff came from Craft Delivery Service, who has been kicked off and back on Instagram. How many we all these days, I swear Instagram is not stopping their attacks on cannabis accounts, but as far as I know, the Craft account is back up right now, and they almost always have the Golden Ratio extract, so that is why I love their, one of the reasons why I love their delivery service. Get this thing heated up for another dab. And if you guys have any questions, cannabis related or not, Stony Sunday is about chilling with you guys and just talking, so whatever comes to mind. The Nectar Collector does not play around. You get the fattest hits on this. I see Carry Me Away. Oh, you're so, oh my God. That's a great screen name. It's spelled different in the beginning, so I was not really sure how to pronounce it, but it's Carry Me Away. They are asking if I have any rules when it comes to stoners smoking on YouTube. I say break them. If there are rules around smoking on YouTube, break them. I didn't get into this job. I didn't start advocating or talking about cannabis to follow the rules. I think that that is a mistake when it comes to trying to advocate for cannabis legality. We can't just follow the rules all the time. So when it comes to YouTube, yeah, I'm absolutely sure that there are rules regarding illegal drug use, regarding who you're smoking with on the channel, and mostly it's just gonna center around the illegal drug use clause, in my opinion. I've had fairly good luck. I've had one video removed so far. That one video was one that I explicitly said I was breaking that law because I was in an area that I wasn't supposed to be smoking in. I don't know if that's why that video was removed, but it was ultimately returned to YouTube later. I don't know. I have seen other weed tubers experience channel, like, what is it called? Suspensions for two weeks at a time where they can't upload, they can't comment, they can't do anything. It's definitely something to be aware of, but if your goal is to advocate cannabis, if your goal is to show people that it's non-harmful, and especially to show the overreaction of the police or mainstream media or even social media networks, then breaking the rules is part of that. Saying you think it's wrong to smoke weed, but I know I'm being non-harmful, I know I'm being non-violent, and doing it anyway, that's, that's totally my jam. So yes, there are rules against illegal drug use on YouTube, I really encourage everyone to have a form of self-expression. Show who you are. Be confident in your identity as a cannabis consumer, a cannabis enthusiast, a cannabis patient, whatever it might be. I want you to be confident in that and to not let people tell you, this isn't the right place. Although, to be honest, I do agree that there are some places that I may medicate more discreetly than others. There are some places, maybe, to be respectful of the time and place. But YouTube's not that place. YouTube's about talking about my passions and my life and sharing with you guys about what I'm into. So of course, cannabis needs to be a part of it. <laughs> Twisted Hippie asked if I enjoy the pure CBD distillate. Um, no, it's not really up my alley. I prefer cannabis. I love cannabis and the full range of cannabinoids that are in the plant. I think it's magical, absolutely magical, that we can breed different strains of cannabis to have higher CBD ratios, higher THCV ratios. I think that's one of them. I don't know. You can have different cannabinoid ratios in a plant, in the strain, and the way that it's grown, and the genetics that helped create it, and you can get a range of cannabinoids. So if you want something high CBD, you can get a high CBD cannabis plant that will also still have presence of other cannabinoids. This matters to me so much because isolates, as their name describes, is just one cannabinoid. One, it's just an isolated form of it. The best research that we have and the most anecdotal evidence, everything out there says you don't want just one cannabinoid. You want the cannabis plant. You want that full range of cannabinoids working for you. So isolating one and either synthesizing it or just having it available on its own, to me is like an American perversion or a pharmaceutical perversion of cannabis. Like sure, I'm not gonna argue that it's not from the plant, that's fine. Maybe you are isolating it straight from the plant. But the plant is fucking amazing as it is. So why are we even doing this to it? Why not just encourage 
growing the whole plant, taking care of the whole plant, consuming the whole plant. Like, I'm, it's just not for me. I don't like the idea of mixing little cocktails of this much CBD and this much THC and this much THC, whatever. I don't like that idea. The plant grows with an amazing range of cannabinoids. It grows ready to help us. And I just think it's so ridiculous to like, to think that we know better than the fucking plant. Like, it's just not for me. It's not for me. So all of the people that say state legal CBD, it can be sold anywhere. It generally almost always means that there are no other cannabinoids present. Twisted Hippie says that they asked because they are use, or they are headed to Colorado soon and they're just wondering with all of the things available what they should be looking for. Especially if you're going to Colorado and you can access the whole plant or concentrates made with the whole plant, go for it. Don't just go for the isolate in my opinion. I think that first nectar collector hit was a little bit clogged and ever since I've cleared it with that hit, it is just like ripping extra extra nice. So I'm loving it. I see TRG asking if I've ever tried high cannabinoid full spectrum extract or high terpenes full spectrum extract. I don't think I've had high terpene full spectrum extract specifically. Um, high cannabinoid full spectrum extract, if that means like an RSO from an outdoor grown high cannabinoid full spectrum extract. Mio, off camera assistance. Would you take that to mean like a sun grown RSO? High cannabinoid full spectrum extract? Uh, it could be an RSO. I don't know if they're talking like, but that would be like edible or stable. I'm not sure what exactly it would refer to if I've had a high cannabinoid full spectrum extract. I'm gonna say it like a hundred more times, but I'm not exactly sure if I've had it. I know that I've had some of the like full spectrum oils and full spectrum yeah, oils I think is what they call them that Harborside's had and some of the edible oils. I'm gonna take a dab. I see Rose asking how can she get a Stony Sunday shirt? One of my favorite questions. We do have the Stony Sunday shirts in stock right now. They are available at coralreefer420.bigcartel.com. I'll have that down in the info below so you guys can click an easy link. It's C-O-R-A-L-R-E-E-F-E-R-420.B-I-G-C-A-R T-E-L.com. Whew, I'm pretty sure that's all of it. I definitely deserve a dab for spelling out loud. And the shirts are made with hemp. They are hemp produced shirts, so they are extra soft, extra durable, and the last for days and years and years and years to come. Cheers! I see a question from Steam Bullet asking if I have to hold the weed in for it to get a full effect. This is probably one of the most asked questions of my YouTube career and it's definitely one that when new viewers find me, I can always tell if they're new because they'll start off right away by saying, you should be holding in your hit and you're wasting your weed and all sorts of things like that. According to my research, based on what I've read in the pot book specifically, but there have been other references as well. Um, cannabis and cannabinoids are going to be inhaled within a couple fractions of a second upon inhalation. And during your breath, like think of how long when you take a dab. You're not just going, done. Or when you inhale, when you hit the pipe, you're not just going, done. You're actually taking a full breath. So how long is that? Five, ten seconds, longer? You're actually like breathing in slowly. So the cannabinoids are going into your lungs and they're being absorbed on that breath. Once you've finished your inhale, Holding your breath at that point is depriving your brain of oxygen. That's it. So the dizziness, the lightheadedness, the like, oh man, it really hit me. That's from holding your breath and depriving your brain of oxygen. Not something I'd suggest or recommend or I find personally enjoyable. But the effect of cannabinoids really depends on just taking that deep breath, bringing it into your lungs. You don't want to just hold it in your mouth. Like some people, when they hit a joint, you just hold it in your mouth. That's a thing that's not how you're supposed to do it. But when it comes to actually getting the effects, 
it's well, it's gonna be come down the esophagus into your lungs and absorbed so so quickly that you don't need to hold your breath. I understand the urban legend. I understand the like peer pressure people have been telling you for years. Gotta hold it in. Gotta hold it in. You're a grown up. Be a grown up. Decide for yourself. Do you like feeling dizzy because you're lightheaded because you held your breath and you don't have any oxygen, or do you like just smoking and being able to enjoy that? I personally enjoy just smoking and not holding my breath. I swear, it's like one of the biggest things that people hold on to, even with how much they can learn about cannabis and all the new information they get. I've seen people that are so experienced and so well informed with cannabis still really choosing to hold their breath because they do prefer the effects of the head rush. So it's really going to be something that you guys have to decide for yourself. but. I don't need it. I certainly feel like I get stoned and I've just never been a breath holder of, of that type, I guess. <laughs> Mermoon Reefer asks, um, have I tried CBD water? No, most CBD waters that I've ever seen don't actually list the CBD dosage or how much is present. They just slap on CBD water and charge five instead of two dollars. Fuck that. No thanks. Like I said, if I want CBD, I have CBD rich strains. I have CBD rich edibles that are made with CBD rich strains. It's just not my habit to buy something just because it says CBD on it. Although it's the habit of many, many other people because that market is huge. The CBD waters of the world and products like that are certainly selling, but I don't think they're attractive to me. So I don't expect to really be into it. Honestly, the ones that I've ever seen, every time I see it, I pick it up, I look at it, I go, let's take a look. Let's see what we got for CBD water. And it has no milligrams. It has no plant source. It has nothing that makes it an actual Medicaid product. It's just, a label. Um, I need to give this like huge disclaimer that I'm a huge fan of CBD rich strains and a huge fan of CBD rich edibles and tinctures. I in no way would ever want you guys to think that I'm discrediting the effects of CBD because of my distaste for CBD isolates and CBD branded other things. To me, I find the best results with CBD when I have other cannabinoids present. That means a little THC and some of the other full range of cannabinoids from that plant. So I'll have a high CBD tincture and then I'll smoke weed. I'll have a high CBD strain and I'll dab as well my normal THC rich stuff. It's a balance of everything that helps me the most. So I in no way want you to think that I'm not into CBD products. It's that I'm not into hemp CBD. I'm not into snake oil sold as CBD and I'm certainly not into water just sold as CBD water without much info on it. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm gonna take another dab. Ooh. If the vape exhale is the best way to dab and save concentrate because you need so little for each dab, I have to out the nectar collector as the worst way to save concentrate because I just want to blaze through it. I just want to do like so many big cloud dabs and you don't load up a specific amount first. You just reach right into the dish with it and you can just dab it all. Let's get tabbing. I'm reading it through the live stream questions, coughing out that dab. Woo! Oh my goodness. Graham is very impressed that I seem more articulate in this video than the last time he watched. Well, go fuck yourself, Graham, because I probably sounded as articulate in the last video, but you're probably just being a dick. So I just want to have to say that. I don't want to have to say it, but I do want to say it because I get backhanded compliments like that every day. I get compliments from people when I come down from a stage going, wow, you actually hold yourself together up there. And I just want people to know I know that. I'm confident in myself. I love the content that I share with you guys and I'm happy to keep doing it. But I also understand that on first impression, I'm just a girl hitting a bong taking a picture of myself. So people's expectations are low. Don't think that I'm going to slow down and explain myself to you. The way that I work is that I'm going to keep doing my thing and assume that if you want to watch, you'll come watch. I don't appreciate backhanded compliments of how you used to not like me, but now you really like me. I really don't think that it's kind. I don't. I think that it's kind to say what you actually do appreciate or what you do like or something that's interesting. But just reminding me of an insult is not nice or just telling me when you would have insulted me is not that friendly. So I'm not that into it. 
telling me that you're impressed with how you articulate I am now just tells me that you didn't give me the time of day before, that you didn't put in any time to know my content or know what I was working on or know the actual work that I do, but you already had a bunch of opinions about it. So to me, it says a lot more about you than it does anything about my work and the actual content I've been providing, but I just couldn't ignore that comment because it seemed like you were really trying to throw a compliment while also saying that I wasn't articulate in the past, but honestly, when I go back and rewatch my old videos for an answer or to look something up or to just double check on whether I've covered something, I'm always blown away by how direct I am with you guys from the beginning, how quickly I am to shut down negative feedback and how sassy I am. People tell me now that the internet has made me rude. I'm like, go back and watch any early Stony Sunday. From the start, I was not here for any of that. So I appreciate the people that have stuck around, the people that have put in the time and gotten to know what I'm actually about. Cause yeah, I get it. I'm a girl hitting a bong, taking a picture of myself. It seems that simple. Let's assume that I'm that simple, but <sighs> I think so many more of you actually know the truth and know what I'm about. And I see people jumping in right now, like Jada, who's been here for years and years and years, and I have to give you guys so much love. I love you guys. You've stuck around longer than most friends or relationships I've had. This is, show has gone on almost seven years. That's longer than I've worked in any one place. That's longer than I've lived in any one place. You guys have been here with me for some of your entire college like durations or high school durations or now you're moving out and experiencing new things and you're still coming back to my channel and I really, really appreciate it. So it's a journey, but the backhanded compliments, they've been there from day one. I think they'll always be there and every now and then I'm gonna just remind people that I'm not here for that. So let's take another dab and I'm gonna answer three rapid fire questions before we call it quits for Stony Sunday today. Three more questions. Heating up the nectar collector. I used to have a quartz nectar collector tip, but it rolled off the top of my like bong shelf one day in my old apartment and it completely disappeared. I never saw it again. Even when we moved and took all the furniture out, where the fuck did it go? Like when I moved, I was hoping and expecting to find it, but it was gone. Three rapid fire questions. One from Dab Baby, what is my favorite piece? Whatever is clean and right in front of me, I am so not picky. I've noticed that my favorite pieces tend to be ones that have some clear around the water so I can actually see it bubble and milk up and everything, but I don't think I could pick just one altogether. Bongs, bigger for sure. I like a big bong. Dabs and stuff, whatever's clean and ready to go. Like I won't just go and hit my favorite piece. If it's hella dirty, I'm like, put that thing away. Let's get something else out and just fucking hit it. Clint James asked a great question. Was there a specific event in my life that made me sure that I wanted to commit to cannabis advocacy. Two events come to mind. It is rapid fire, so I'm gonna go really quickly. One, I was present and able to film the beginning of the raid on Oaksterdam University. I think it was October 2010 or 11. I don't remember the exact year, forgive me, but I was able to drop what I was doing and go witness the raid and watch federal officers carry books out of a building like the books were a crime and with federally like expired license plates driving around persecuting us for what we were doing i was so frustrated um but after a couple of hours of being present at that raid i'm feeling very impassioned i got called to go to work and i had to go serve fish and chips at pier 39 and i loved my job like i was very happy to be a waitress there but sitting on that bart train i was almost in tears and I was just thinking, this is stupid. Like, I, I love my job, but I don't love fish and chips this much. I wanna talk about cannabis. I wanna be able to stop what I'm doing and be at a raid and tell people that this matters. So I wasn't able to quit that day. Um, it was a little bit a little bit after that, but that definitely was a moment, that BART ride for me where I, I did what I had to do. I had to go to work and I couldn't lose my job in that moment, 
but I something changed in me for sure that I knew that in my future I, I wanted to be able to stop what I was doing and witness for people that needed it. Um, the second event to be really quick is one time I was talking about taxes paid on medical marijuana and there was a person present in the conversation that didn't believe me that medical marijuana patients had to pay taxes. They didn't believe me that San Jose had raised the tax to like 25% on top of the product's cost, on top of the city tax, on local blah blah blah. So much extra tax. They didn't care and they did it anyway. And this person didn't even believe me that taxes were being put on patient's medicine because under their understanding that shouldn't happen. That frustrating conversation and the fact that the person who was with me, my mother at the time, sided with the person who didn't know what was going on and she was like, well, how are we supposed to know? We're not medical marijuana patients. Why would we know anything? It made me sure that I wanted to help Cannabis News get more attention. So I started News Nug as a direct result of that conversation because News Nug's entire goal is to take a cannabis news story. They used to be on the back pages or in the middle in the little tiny print and they used to be only in specialty magazines and far away deep in the buried buried pages of the internet and I would try and put them on the front page and I'd bring them to everyone's attention and I'd ask you to share them on your Facebook page and share them on your Twitter feed and share them with people that aren't smokers so that when you encounter someone as misinformed as this person was, you will have the information to inform them and to help them catch up and to help them see what's happening to patients and the costs that are being put on us. Um, so those two events absolutely solidified the things that I wanted to pursue in the future and the things that I wanted to dedicate my time to and I do the best that I can to keep them both in mind with the work that I do. So it's never been about reviewing a strain, it's never really been about reviewing a product, it's really been about getting information out there, witnessing people that are feeling like no one on earth is seeing that they're being attacked for smoking, that they're being arrested, taken away from their family, and no one's coming to help them. I want to bear witness for them. So that is what I do. And the final question, that was not a speedy answer, but the final question is what edible gets me the most high? Oh my God, Jada, what a good question. I'm going to heat this up for the final dab and I'm going to ponder an answer. Gotta keep it 100% with you guys always. Even if I haven't had this edible in quite some time, I think I know exactly what is like the most potent in my experience. And it might surprise you guys. I don't think it's one I've even mentioned lately, but. <laughs> I'd have to say Taco Wascas. The little drinks, they're like an ounce and a half or three ounces or something of a hemp milk and then tons of delicious cannabinoids and flavor. Oh my God, it's so fucking good. And they're so potent, like one or two of those and I am out. They have hundreds of cannabinoids. I think they've made some reasonable strength ones, but I really, really swore by them for flights when I would have them in stock. Now I'm in Santa Cruz and I feel like I don't see them as often. I don't see the Chakawaska guy as often. I really miss you, Chakawaska Carrie. Miss you. Um, but they're, I think they still are what comes to mind for what gets me the most high. After that, I love the Bud Barber edibles. I love their Rice Krispie treats. The Glacial Gold Distillate Edible Oil, I think has to like go up there on the list too. It was so fucking good. So thank you guys for watching Stony Sunday. If you want to get the shirt, they are available on Big Cartel, coralreefer420.bigcartel.com. And if you want to join for another sesh, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you will see when I go live. Stay high, you guys. Bye.